our center is focused to examine the effects of uh, air toxins, what we call volatile organic compounds, and their effects on cardiovascular health and metabolic complications. What we are studying is Superfund sites. The whole Superfund program was started in the early 1980s and the driving forces were two incidents. One was Love Canal in New York and the other was known as the Valley of Drums. We were one of the first two Superfund sites in the United States that started the whole program. The Valley of the Drums was right here in southern Louisville. Industrial waste, essentially solvents, they were dumped at some fields and then the toxic waste went in the river and there was flooding and it's polluted all the adjoining areas and people living close by were affected. There are lots of Superfund centers across the country and these centers are supposed to address the concerns of the residents that may be living near or impacted by a Superfund site. In Jefferson County, of course, we have the Valley of the Drums that's far off and it's been mostly contained but then we have other sites here. One in Louisville, for instance, is the Lees Lane landfill. I'm here at the Lees Lane Superfund site, a 112 acre site which the Institute is studying. The perfect storm for environmental degradation and health risk. In 1920, it was a sand and gravel pit. They continued to mine until about 1940. Riverside Gardens, a community immediately adjacent to the site, was formed in 1929. From the 1940s, after we finished mining sand here, they turned it into a landfill. And from 1940 to 1975, over 2 million cubic yards of waste was dumped here. But at the time, there were no state regulations for a landfill. But after it had closed in 1975, we had a number of houses. People would come home and there'd be blue sheets of flame around their hot water heaters, methane gas gas, but also volatile organics coming from the landfill into their homes. In 1980, we had a flood event, and as the water came over the old landfill, suddenly 55-gallon drums started popping up out of the water. And so I was here with the state trying to lasso 55-gallon drums into our John boats. The groundwater has been contaminated and we've already measured elevated levels of volatile organics. So we have exposure from all directions, including below us. What is surprising is to learn that these vapors are actually moving out of the ground in Superfund sites, brownfield sites, all across the country. And there's a very poor understanding of what that health risk is. We are all exposed to VOCs and these volatile organic compounds actually are quite prevalent and they are things like benzene and xylene, acrolein and formaldehyde, and they come from a variety of different sources. And the problem in the science is that we don't necessarily know all the time how much is bad. The way our center is structured, we have two projects which are looking at the biomedical health and then two projects which are environmental engineering and the remediation of these airborne toxicants. The first project is about the effects of VOC exposures on human populations. We have enrolled more than 700 subjects to this study and prospectively we'll be studying them every two years. The reason this is so exciting and so unique is because we are looking at something that's not been looked at before, which is understanding the effects of environmental toxins on heart disease and liver disease. We know that we don't have the heavy either industrial or environmental exposure that we had many years ago, but what we think happens is that with a bad diet and a combination of environmental exposure, we get the same problem that we used to have many years ago. A lot of individuals are told to diet and exercise, but if your environment isn't conducive to your health, whole body health isn't going to ever take place. And so when the human volunteers were studying the potential impact of the VOC exposures on cardiometabolic syndrome using imaging and blood-based biomarkers for both exposures and disease, this is the clinical chemistry analyzer that we use. If you want to look at the cholesterol or triglycerides or liver enzymes in the blood and so forth, what we are looking here is the effects of volatile organic compounds on neurotransmitters. So you inhale these chemicals, they go in the brain and release the neurotransmitters. And we look at the various metabolites of those neurotransmitters in the urine. So this is one of our mass spectrometers. 
and we use it to resolve different species in biological fluids. So for example, if you want to look at the VOC metabolites in the urine, then we take the urine sample and then apply the sample on the column and then elute it using different solvents. So we hear about cancer causing chemicals. You've never heard about heart disease causing chemicals, right? It doesn't have that ring to it. Nobody worries about heart disease causing chemicals. But indeed, the most common outcome of an environmental exposure is usually heart disease. Your blood pressure changes, your insulin sensitivity changes, the way you handle glucose changes. There is an increase in these flight or fight hormones which have adverse effects in your heart in the long term. So we have evidence and a good premise to study exposures in terms of their impact on heart disease and liver disease. Not only enrolling the subjects to the study, but following them up and making this exercise possible is our community engagement team. We are asking the community for their expertise. We are asking them to do work with us. Really facilitating a bi-directional share of knowledge. When I was in grad school, I really wanted to focus in on environmental justice and policy. Once I understood that my family lived in an environmental injustice area, it just opened up the floodgates for me to want to understand more and more. We also ask community members to help us figure out what their concerns are so we can address some of them. The engagement with the Superfund group is refreshing because they value community input and I think they actually intend to utilize the input uh, that is given. In human studies, we are limited because we can only study associations. We cannot study the causality. So in order to dive deeper, we are doing preclinical studies where experimental animals are being exposed to select VOCs. In project two, we perform exposures with individual volatile organic compounds and relate those exposures to health outcomes that affect cardiovascular health. Volatile organic compounds are the soup that makes up air pollution, but because it's the soup, we don't know how individual volatile organic compounds influence cardiovascular or heart health. We expose mice to different levels of VOCs, and then we would see what type of injury this exposure causes, what are the underlying mechanisms, and how such injury could be prevented. Complementing to these biomedical projects, we have one of the environmental science projects taking a two-pronged approach to study the environmental levels of volatile organic compounds. As part of our environmental monitoring team for our sub-project of the overall center, I have a colleague, Brent Williams, and his doctoral student, Audrey Dong, developing a novel instrument to measure these VOCs at high time resolution. This can be fit in the back of a vehicle like a Prius, driven around neighborhoods, and we can spatially map out VOC concentrations in space and in time to better understand people's exposures. This vehicle can be placed at a stationary location, like at a home, where we can alternate every five minutes between sampling indoors and outdoors to understand how the pollution indoors and outdoors are related to placing it on a vehicle and driving it around the neighborhood. It pulls the outdoor air into the device inside the instrument, collects it for say five minutes on an adsorbent. We then heat that adsorbent up and place the molecules back into the gas phase and then they're injected into the instrument's analysis chamber. In that analysis chamber, we actually can measure the detailed composition of the molecules. Spatial mapping of air pollutants such as VOCs is quite important because it can sometimes change block by block. Now, while we're focused on certain chemicals commonly associated with Superfund sites, such as Lee's Lane, this instrument has the capacity to measure a broad range of VOC chemicals. We can even conduct what we call untargeted analysis, where we can collect the samples and then afterwards compare them to libraries and databases and determine what chemicals were present, rather than going into the study with a precise list of chemicals that we're seeking to examine. So this instrument gives us an amazing capacity to study VOCs going forward. Low-cost devices for sensing VOCs is one of the other projects that's being conducted in the Louisville Superfund Research Center. Our goal is to measure these trace level, highly toxic VOCs on site or from air samples taken at a Superfund site at concentrations of parts per billion to parts per trillion. To do that, we're pursuing the development of two platforms. The first, which I have here, is a silicon microreactor that's fabricated here in the Micro Nanotechnology Center at the University of Louisville. 
It basically consists of thousands of micro pillars coated with a chemical reagent that traps a VOC from an air sample as it's introduced and then evacuated across the chip. So we can then rinse off the adducts and analyze those adducts using our mass spectrometer. The key to this technology, of course, is that we're concentrating these VOCs from a one liter sample to as little as 0.1 milliliter. So that's a 10,000 fold concentration effect, which allows us to then quantify these compounds. Our second technology is uh, to build this kind of a sensor array. We use thiols to modify gold nanoparticles so that the gold nanoparticles will interact with the individual target compound. So we can tell what is this compound and what's the concentration so using two different approach, one is on-site monitoring and the other is this microchip. That will give us a good understanding of the exposures to different VOCs at various sites. So we will have much better analysis of the VOC exposure data. And then finally, we have a fourth project with Dr. John Fortner at Yale University with the remediation project. One of the next stages of this center is going to be to consider how we treat these compounds and how to actually move them or break them down. In terms of VOC treatment, part of our job is to consider existing treatment technologies, but also how to improve those technologies. We want to take that technology and make it twice as good, 10 times cheaper, so everybody has access to solve these problems. For VOCs in general, it's a broad class of molecules, and so we sort of have to have this broad approach for many, many different types of bonds and structures. This robust treatment technology that can be quick, it can remove things from folks' homes fast enough that it actually affects the concentration in the air and thus the exposure and thus the risk. We're approaching this sort of from a new angle with material science, sort of at the nanoscale, maybe even below the nanoscale. These new materials, they can really absorb light or microwave and generate these high temperature gradients or radical oxygen species or other reactive pathways. A lot of these smaller organic compounds that are in the air, as they interact with the materials, they'll be degraded sort of on contact. Right now we are just doing the lab scale studies, but the plan is once we have a good handle on it, then we can develop it and it should be cost effective. So it could be used at the actual Superfund sites. The other aspect of not only our center, but the whole Superfund program is to train the next generation of scientists. The training core has about 15 to 20 students, both graduate students and postdoctoral fellows, working at ways to mitigate the effects of these chemicals, working on sensors to detect them, working in community engagement to communicate these findings, working on mobile applications. We have students who are working in the laboratory doing research studies. Our trainees get a really well-rounded experience. They interact with students from arts and sciences, medicine, engineering, with scientists from across the country. They go to Washington, D.C. to interact with congressional leadership and experience the entire gamut of dealing with environmental health problems and their research. These projects cannot be a success without the community understanding because that's our end goal. We want people to understand, we want to educate the people and make them aware so they can take the right precautions, they can decrease the level of VOCs. One of the many functions in the Superfund Research Centers nationally is to take the research that we're doing and translate it to the public to public policy makers, to the rest of the scientific community. My particular focus is on the work we do within the community to take the research that we've done and make sure it's accessible to them and that they understand it. To essentially engage the community as collaborators, we created this thing called the Louisville Data Commons when we realized that we did have people in our community who wanted to do some of that analysis themselves. So we listened to them and we stood up a public data portal we're really going out of our way to try to be as transparent as possible. Like, if you want to look at the actual source data, here it is. I think what's beautiful is how we can turn tragedy into action to protect someone else or to protect another community or to stop it from happening elsewhere. We are the only center who is really focusing on these volatile organic compounds and studying the cardiometabolic toxicity. We have assembled a team which has unique expertise in cardiovascular toxicity as well as environmental exposure toxicity. So in that aspect, ours is a very unique center and we bring something that the, the program did not have before.